So you have a site with a ton of entries that you want users to see quickly and without overloading your servers. However, if you retrieve too much data at once, you can put a strain on your server and network resources that will lead to higher latency and a worse user experience. This is where pagination comes in. There are two main ways you can paginate pages on the client side. One, having a paginated view where a user can click buttons to request more information, kind of like Google in the 2010s. Or two, having an infinite scroll where as you scroll, the user will get more data. Having an infinite scroll is a really cool user experience because as you scroll, more entries are loaded based off where the user is and what's visible to the user. As a result, you'll never have to fetch more data than you need to. In this video, we'll talk through how we can implement a client-side infinite scroll in Next13 on my website, wrigley.io. The first thing that you need is a paginated backend endpoint that you can pass in a page size and page number to from your client. The main steps that your paginated backend endpoint will take are one, get the results, and two, return the results from the starting index, which will be your page number minus one times your page size, to the ending index, which will be your page number minus one times your page size plus the page size. I'll attach a video on how to do that with Express in the description below. Next, after you have your backend endpoint, what we wanna do is continue to request the next page as you reach the bottom of the results. We can do this really cleanly using use infinite query from React Query and use intersection from Mantine hooks. So our logic will be request some initial data, and then once the user viewport intersects with the last result, which we can tell from use intersection, request more data with use infinite query. The really nice thing about use infinite query is it has this initial data fetching and then data refetching built in. So it'll make this process super easy. Cool, so like I was saying, uh, we're gonna start with some data. Uh, we wanna display this in a paginated way. So at the end, we want to be able to scroll. And then at the end, we want this loading circle to come up and us to load more data. So we don't overwhelm our servers and we can get data quickly. So right now we're starting with nothing. Um, what we're gonna to wanna to do is create some uh, post infinite scroll. Because the way this works is as we scroll, uh, when we get to the bottom of our scroll, um, we're going to be requesting more data. We're going to need to start with some initial data. So the way this will work is that we'll get some initial posts and some initial next page token from our API, um, our paginated backend API. So our posts will be um, an array of posts and our next page token will be a number and we will just await uh, get posts returning. Um, so we'll pass this as initial data to our uh, post infinite scroll. Uh, you can call this whatever you want to call it, um, but I'll call it that. Um, and this will set our initial props for React Query. So in our uh, post infinite scroll, I've destructured these props already. Um, and we're going to want to start by uh, just importing a few things. First, we want to import infinite query from React Query. This will allow us to uh, just like infinitely query things as we reach the bottom of our viewport. So it'll continue to fetch the next page. Um, and then uh, the way we'll know that we're at the bottom of our viewport is we'll uh, put a ref in the bottom element in our viewport. And then each time uh, that changes and we reach an intersection with that, uh, we'll make a new request. Uh, and the way that we can know that we've reached our intersection is we can just use intersection from Mantine hooks, as I discussed before. So um, for starters, uh, we're going to take our initial data and our initial next page token and set that as information in our use infinite query hook. Use infinite query is really nice because uh, it'll handle the fetching the next page uh, and handle the data for you. Uh, first, you just need to set a query key. You can set this to anything. Uh, and then we'll have our function for uh, fetching our next data. Uh, for our page param, we can set a default value uh, to one. Uh, at each level, we want to fetch posts and then we want to return those posts. So we just fetched posts in this page. So I'm going to copy this over. Um, and then the only difference here is that each page we want to pass in our page param. So we're going to pass in an option to pass in that page param. So just to give you uh, an insight to how this looks, uh, I implemented it this way. Uh, it takes in options. Uh, you can pass in page or page size. It'll default to the first page with five options. And then it'll just include that in my API request where it requests that page and that page size uh, and then fetch that information. So uh, I'll return this data, which will get added and then uh, to my data. Um, and then uh, I can get my next page param. So I'll implement get next page param. 
and I won't use the first part, but I will use the second pages. Um, and I will say that my next page param is always going to be my current page plus one. And then I need to start with some initial data and that's what I just passed in. Uh, my initial data is going to be the pages equal to the initial data, which is my array of posts. And my page param is going to be my initial next page token. So let's destructure uh, the information we want from using infinite query. Uh, we want the data, which is going to be all of our posts. Uh, we want our fetch next page, which is the, the method we're going to call to fetch our next page. Um, and then uh, React Query is really nice because it'll tell us when we're fetching our next page so we can do responsive things like show the loading spinner and that's gonna be an is fetching next page. Um, and then first off, uh, one thing about data is it's going to nest our posts a layer deep inside data. So I actually wanna flatten this out to make this easier to map over. So I'm going to do data pages dot flat map. And then at each page, I'm going to return that page. So this is going to flatten out our posts. Um, and then uh, now I want to create a HTML ref that I can put in my last posts in each page. So when we get to it, we can use the use intersection hook and then know to fetch our next page. So uh, I'm going to make a last post ref, which is a use ref of an HTML element, which will initially be null. Um, and then I'll destructure um, use intersection and use intersection is going to uh, take a root, which will be last post ref uh, dot current. And then our threshold is one. So the last thing we're going to need now is just a use effect. So we'll say each time our entry changes, um, we'll say if entry isn't existing and is intersecting, is intersecting is true, fetch next page. Okay, so let's see what our issue is here. Uh, we destructured with a parenthesis instead of brackets. So now this should work. Uh, and now the last thing we need to do is we need to loop over um, our uh, posts display these and we need to embed our ref in our last uh, post of each page. Cool, so now let's uh, loop over our posts and display them. Uh, we can do this by saying post.map. Uh, we want to get our posts and the ID of our posts. Uh, and then we can have this for loop, or oh, sorry, we can have an if else where we can say if our ID is equal to uh, our post.length minus one, we know that's the last one. Um, and consequently, we can embed the ref in it. Uh, so we can say return div, and we're going to have this discuss preview that has a really uh, pretty representation of our post. So we can just pass that, that in and get the discuss preview I was showing you above. And then we can put the ref um, in our uh, div. So then uh, in the case that uh, this is not our last post, we can do exactly the same thing. We just don't want our ref in there. Um, so now this should be good to go. We just won't have the loading spinner. So if we go here, we see we have data, which is awesome. And then when we get to the bottom, uh, you'll be able to see in the network request, we should request the next page. So why are we not requesting the next page? Uh, it looks like we're not invoking fetch next page. So that's the issue. So now that we've started invoking that, let's scroll to the bottom and it looks like we're fetching everything. Cool, so last thing, we need to just show a loading spinner. Um, and like I was saying, uh, React Query makes this super easy because it gives us this is fetching next page. So you can just say, if is fetching next page, then we can just show this and we can style this with Tailwind. Uh, the way I'd style this is uh, pretty, uh, maybe there's a better way to do this but uh, the way I'm doing this right now in prod is I'm just uh, setting the height and the width um, and then I'm doing animate spin um, and then I'm setting the border um, border white and then I'm setting text neutral 950 so Let's see if this does the job. Cool, so now as I scroll, we should see the loading spinner. 
uh, and we do. It's just really fast, and you saw that loading spinner, but awesome, cool. So this works. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below.